Oh my goodness gracious. This is our last lesson for the school year. And then we're going to start reviewing for the final. It has been a pleasure. Nay, it has been an honor to be your math teacher. And if there are anybody, uh, if there's anyone or anybody who has just, you know, popped in to see a video or watch a video, listen to a video or audio here and there, I hope you enjoyed yourself and I hope you learned a little bit of something about math. Let's begin this last lesson, Unit 5, Lesson 6. We're going to start talking about the normal distribution, bell curves, percentages, and all that jazz. Okay? Let's begin. First of all, let's address what our calculator can do for us. Okay? If we have a normal distribution, and they ask us to find a percentage, all right? The calculator can do this for us. You see this window I have right here? It's a beautiful, beautiful window. Let's go here. Well, how do I get that in the calculator? I go to, I hit seconds. Then I go to distribution. And then I pick normal C, D, F. And that's an L, not a 1. Okay? Normal C, D, F. There is a normal PDF. This is choice number two, I believe. But let me show you. Here's my calculator. Okay. I'm going to go to second and I say distribution. Distribution is blue. It's above VARS. Okay. Right there in blue. So you see I say distribution. I don't see distribution anywhere. That's because silly it's in blue. So I hit second and VARS. That gives me distribution. And I want number two. I don't want one. I want number two. And it gives me the exact same screen I have right here. Bam. Beautiful. We are going to use this, okay, to find percentages. Now, what's the best way to understand how it works? To actually use it. Okay, so let's move forward and see what we have. Exercise one. At Arlington high school, 424 juniors recently took the SAT exam. On the math portion of the exam, oh, I love it when we talk math. Makes me want to drink coffee. Anyways, on the math portion of the exam, the mean score was 540 with a standard deviation of 80. If the scores in the exam were normally distributed, answer the following questions. All right, well, let's take a look at this. What percent of the math scores fell between 500 and 660? All right, 500 and 660. So here's a minimum value I have, and here's a maximum value I have that I want to find the percent. Okay, that is absolutely perfect scenario for us to use normal CDF in our calculator. So let me bring this up. And remember, I went to second. Okay, I went to second. I went to VARS, which is the distribution list. And I picked number two. All right, so what do we have? What do we have here? You see it has lower and upper. Lower and upper refer to my bounds. My 500 is my lower, that's my minimum. It's my lower bound, if you will. And 660 is my upper bound, my maximum. So I'm going to go here, and for lower, I'm going to put five, oh, 500, not 550. Hoo hoo, user error. And I'm going to put 660 in my upper bound. Now, what do these two things here represent? All right, well, you have two symbols. You have this thing here, it kind of looks like an M, almost like a curse of M. That's your mean. They give us a mean, 540. And then you have this thing that kind of looks like this O with a little tail on top. That's your standard deviation. And, of course, they give us that here as well. It's 80. Okay? So let's plug in our mean of 540. And let's plug in our standard deviation of 80. Now, all i got to do here is hit enter, 
and it pastes it on the screen for me. And I hit enter one more time. Oh, nice. All right. So let's go here. Our answer is right in front of us. They want to know what percent. Remember, we have a decimal right now. So how do we convert a decimal to a percent? I slide the decimal over two times. I end up with 62.46. I'm going to round to the tenth. I'm going to call that 62.5%. Sixty two point five percent of all my scores are going to fall in between five hundred and six sixty. Right? That's all that means. OK, so let me get this out of our way. Right down here. Now, B says, well, how many scores fell between five hundred and six sixty? We have the percent. We have sixty two and a half percent. But how many scores? does that represent? Well, look what they tell us here in the, the word problem. At Arlington High School, 424 juniors took the SAT. So if 62.5% of the juniors took the SAT, that means 62.5% of this number, 424. So I take 424 and I multiply it by 0.625. Because any time we put a percent into an equation, we need to make it into a decimal. Again, we need to turn it back into a decimal. So I'm going to take 0 0.625 and multiply it by 424. And that's 265 juniors. So I will just call that uh, how many scores? 265 scores. That is not a value of a score. That's not like the percentage of score. That's not what someone scored. That's how many actual scores, how many students scored, okay, between 500 and 660, 265 of them did. All right, on to the next one. C, if Evan scored 740 on his math exam, what is his percentile rank? So what is his percent, okay, percentile rank? So he scored 740. All right, and again, I'm going to use my normal CDF. Okay, I'm going to have my lower, my upper, my mean, and my standard deviation. Well, the mean and standard deviation are still going to be the same. This is the same situation. It's still 540 is our mean, and 80 is our standard deviation. So you have 540 is our mean. 80 is our standard deviation. But what about our lower and our upper? Well, obviously, he scored 740, so I want to know right where that falls. So all I do is I say, well, starting from 0 all the way to 740, what's that percent? So his score becomes my upper. And obviously, we start at the beginning, which is 0. That's our lower. All right? Now we're going to put that in. And obviously, if a majority of the kids scored between Okay, a majority of the kids actually scored between 500 and 660, right? So he's going to be high up in the percent. I mean, 740 is a much better score than 660 on the math portion, all right? In fact, unless things have changed, I believe you can only score a perfect score is 800. So um, he did extremely well. And when it compared to the rest of the juniors, the 424 juniors, he's probably way up high when it comes to percentage-wise, all right? So let's go back to second distribution, pick number two, and I'm going to go from zero to 740. And because I didn't change anything, my standard deviation and my, my mean and my standard deviation haven't changed. They're still in there, so I'm going to leave them. That's good. I hit enter, hit enter one more time. And let's call that, oh, that's good. If I want to know what percentile, it's 0.9937 or 99 points. I'm going to round that up, 4%. So he is in roughly the 99th percentile. Does the word percentile ring a bell at all? When you go to your doctors and you're a little kid and they keep on 
weighing you to see what your weight is. They keep on measuring your height to see how you're growing. They'll tell your parents, oh, your child is in the 70th percentile. The average, let's say you go there as a 10-year-old. Let's say the average weight for a 10-year-old is, I don't know, 80 pounds. 80 pounds would be the 50th percentile. If you weigh more than 80 pounds, you will be higher up. You will be like in the 60th percentile, the 70th percentile. If you weigh less than 80 pounds, you would be less than 50th percentile. You might be in the 30th percentile. Same thing, if you're taller than average, your percentile will be higher than 50% because 50% represents the actual average. All right? So this dude here at 99.4 percentile, he is way above and beyond what the average kid scored from this high school on that math portion of the SAT. Good job, Evan. He must have been tutored by Mr. Visca, I think. Anyways, D, approximately how many students scored at the same or better than Evan round to the nearest student? Who? So, out of my 100%, okay, out of my 100%, Evan scored at 99.4%. So if I subtract those two, only 0 0.6 kids, okay, scored as good as Evan or better, okay? So if I'm on a number line here and it starts at 0% and it goes all the way to 100%, Evan scored right here at 99.4%. So there is only 0.6% that is better than him. As good or better, I should say. They're asking about those kids. He did better than all these kids here. Okay? But the kids right here did just as good as him or better. And that only represents 0.6%. So they're not asking me what percent of kids did better. They want to know actually how many. Remember... 424 kids took the test. I am not going to multiply that by 0.6 because that's a percent. I don't want a percent. I want a decimal. I've got to slide that decimal one, two spots to the left. So it's 0 0.006 in decimal form. Whoo! That's not many kids. So let's take this calculator. Let's take 424 and let's multiply it times 0 0.006. Yeah, if we're rounding, let's call it 3. Okay, that's 2.5, so let's call it 3 students. Only 3 students out of 424 did as good or better than Evan. That's crazy. And Evan aced it. And you know what? You will too once you know this stuff. That's my little pun right there for you, kids. So we see this word percentile pop up again. And I started to explain a little bit of what it is. And it's really not going to get that different from what I mentioned before. Percentile is just it's a number value out of 100. Okay? So... To kind of bring up the example we brought before, the doctor's office. If you are 10 years old and they weigh you and they measure your height and they say you're the 50th, you're in the 50th percentile for weight and 50th percentile for height, that is exactly average and par for the course. Okay? So I guess 50 would be an absolute average or the mean, right? I'm not multiplying it by mean and I'm not spelling mean correctly. Mean. It's the same thing as the average, right? It means the same thing. It means. Mean means the same. I'm sorry. I'll stop. Dad joke. Anyways, um, 50 percentile is where you want to be. Now, when it comes to weight, you don't want to be more than 50%. You want to be heavier. You know, you want to try and be around 50%, maybe a little bit lighter, a little heavier. That's fine. But you don't want to be like 90th percentile for weight. That's unhealthy. You don't want to be 10th percentile for height because then you would be really, really short because this is the average either weight or height. So if I'm lower than this, okay, for height, 
that means you need to hit a growth spurt at some point because you are only 10% of what the average height is. All right? If I took 100 kids, you'd be in the lower 10% for height. All right? If you play basketball, it'd be sweet if you were like in the 80th percentile for height because then you would be a lot bigger than the average. Right? And that's pretty much how percentiles work. In the doctor's office, the next time you go, uh, maybe you're 15 years old and every, you still got to go to a pediatrician until you're 18. Hey, no shame in that game. In fact, when I was 18, I didn't want to leave my pediatrician and go to some other dude. You know, I, I stayed there until I was like 21. My pediatrician told me, I think you graduated pediatrics. I think you really need to move on. And I'm like, but doc, man, you're, you're my boy. You're the only one that's ever, you know, checked my throat for strep. You're, you're the only one that's ever prescribed any medicine to me. And it, it took a little bit, but I went and everything was good. And, you know, whatever. I hung on long to my pediatrician. He was a good guy. All right. Dr. Darling was his name. I'll never forget him. Good guy. Now, the next time you go, listen to what he says for weight and height. Ask him. So say, what's my percentile for weight and height? And he'll give that to you, and, and now you know exactly what that means. Okay, so we have example two, three, and four, which we're going to use the normal CDF for. Okay, and if you want to pause this and do this on your own, go nuts. If you don't, well, hey. You can, you can just watch me do them. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to go through them somewhat quicker, but you can pause and, and rewind this or whatever. Slide the bar back. All right, so example two. The heights, oh, this is perfect. The heights of 16-year-old teenage boys are normally distributed with a mean of 66 inches and a standard deviation of three. If Jabari is 72 inches tall, which of the following is closest to his height percentile rank? Ooh, percent. They give us a mean of 66. They give us a standard deviation of 3. And they give us his height, which is 72. They want to know his percentile. Again, I'm going to do normal CDF. I've got my lower. I'm just going to write one letter. My upper bound. My mean thing. And my standard deviation. Okay. Uh, Jabari's height is going in for my upper, and I'm starting at zero. If I want to know his one number, okay, that means that number that I'm trying to find the percentile rank is my upper, starting from zero all the way to that number, okay? Um, if I look back here, and I drew this little number line, our dude Evan was at the 99.4 percentile. How did I figure that out? I figured from zero to his score, that was a percent. Okay, that covers the percent that he has. That's why when they give us one number, okay, like here they gave us 740. Jabari's height, they're giving us what, 72? I want to figure out where that falls on our scale from where I start at zero to that number. I need that percent. So I go here again. On my scale, he's 72, right? So from zero, here's 100. He's at 72, and you say, oh, isn't that 72%? Well, yeah, this is a bell curve, though. It's like this. There might be more kids right in here. It's not going to be distributed nice and perfect for us, okay? That would be 72% on a scale from 0 to 100, yes. But we have a mean of 66. The middle is not 100. My middle, my 50th percentile, is actually a height of 66 inches, okay? So, no, it's not just going to be 72%. Don't fall into that trap, okay? Our mean, 66. Our standard deviation, 3. Let's put this in the calculator, all right? Let's put this in the calculator. Second distribution, number 2. We're going to go from 0 to 72. Our mean is 66, and our standard deviation is 3. Three. I'm going to hit enter twice and paste. One, two. And that's roughly 97.977, which is 97.7%, which is closest. Oh, did I do that right? Yeah, 97.7, which is closest to 98. Okay. Dude's a baller, basketball player. I'd definitely be pushing him into basketball. He's six feet at 16 years old. It's 98th percentile for height, so he's taller than 97 or 98% of his average 16-year-old, you know, 
boys. So he should definitely be ball. He should be center or power forward, depending on his build. All right. Exercise three. The weights of Siamese cats are normally distributed with a mean of 6.4 pounds, a standard deviation of 0.8 pounds. If a breeder of Siamese cats has 128 cats in his care, how many can he expect to have weights between 5.2 and 7.6? All right. So how many? They don't want the percent anymore. They want the actual number. If I know the percentage, I can multiply that times the number of cats he has, which is 128. So, lower bound, 5.2. Upper bound, 7.6. I want to find the percentage that's in between there. Okay? My mean, which is this curse of M, 6.4. And my standard deviation, 0 0.8. I want that percentage because that will tell me how many cats, how many. Okay, if 50% of 128, that would be half of that. That would be 64. If it's 70%, I multiply it by 0.7 and so forth. Let's do this, okay? Second, distribution two. And I'm going to go from 5.2. There's the two. I'm going to go to, yep, the point didn't even show up. 5.2. It's going to go to 7.6. All right, my mean is 6.4, and it's just 0.8. All right, that is roughly 86.6%. So I will call that's about 0.866, but I'm going to multiply that times my 128 because they don't want the percent, they want the actual number of cats. So I multiply that number times 128. It is approximately 110 or 111 cats. So that's 110.8 approximately cats. We'll call that 111 cats. Out of our 128, 111 of them should be between those two weights, 5.2 and 7.6 pounds. Very good. We got another one, example four. If one quart bottles of apple juice have weights that are normally distributed, and notice we're seeing this a lot here, normally distributed. That's good. We want to do that. That's what normal CDF helps us do. Okay? And we'll get into that in a little bit more. Right now, we're just focusing on using that calculator. All right? Okay, if they're normally distributed with a mean of 64 ounces, okay, we know that's, okay, when it comes to normal distribution, we have mean, 64 ounces, standard deviation of 3 ounces, what percent, aha, Finding that out. What percent of bottles would be expected to have less than 58 ounces? When I say less than 58 ounces, that's from 0 to 58. Okay? 0 to 58. What percent falls in that category? Guess what? My lower bound? My upper bound? My mean is 64. And my standard deviation... It's three. I have everything I need. Let's do this. Second, bars, which is the distribution menu. Choice two, which is normal CDF. I'm going to go from zero to 58. Okay. And my mean is 64. And my, uh, yeah, it's three. I didn't write it there, but it's three. <clears throat> And I move down to paste, and I just hit enter twice. And that is roughly 0 0.0227, which is, if I slide this over twice and round up, I'd call it 2.3% approximately. Choice four. All right, so I, I hope you're getting comfortable with this, because there's always like one question that you can use this calculator for in the test. That has to do with like finding a percent or percentile. Just put it right in the calculator. All right. All right, number five, and I think we're gonna end here. This will be a good good point to end after we do five, A, B, and C. Um, normal distribution of values has a mean of 47 and a standard deviation of 3.2. 
Beautiful. Normal distribution? Great. Mean? 47. Standard deviation? 3.2. Everything is point blank straightforward. Love it. So let's find A. The, find the percent of values that lie between 42 and 50. Lower, upper, 42 to 50. My mean is 47. My standard deviation is 3.2. Put that in the calculator and figure it out. Seconds, distribution, two. Going from 42 to 50, 50, and it's 47, and it is 3.2. Love it. Hit enter twice. Bang, bang. Okay, that's roughly 0.7666. I'm going to slide this decimal over twice, and I'm going to round this 6 up. So I'm going to call that 76.7 um, percent. Okay, 76.7 percent. Not bad. We seem to know what we're doing. Okay, so let's do B. Now, this is slightly different. I'm going to put lower, I'm going to put upper, but my mean is the same, and my standard deviation, okay? That's 47 and 3.2. But for B, it says find the percent of values that are greater than 50%. So that means from 50% to 100%, right? So uh, greater than 50, I'm sorry, that is not percent, that's actual value, it's a number here, value. So it's numbers that are 50 or more, okay? So my lower bound is going to be 50. The question is, if we wanted to find 50 or less, we can do from 0 to 50. We can do a lower bound of 0 and an upper bound of 50. But now we want 50 or more. So let me ask you something here. Um, if the average is 47, that's the average, let's call it a, a score or whatever. The average score is 47. Obviously, no one's going to score. I mean, people might score 80s. People might score 90s. People might score 110s. This might not be a test out of 100. Maybe this is like a SAT or whatever. But if the average score is 47, chances are no one's going to score 10,000. Okay? So in a situation like B, when it says or more, pick an extremely large number. You can even put a million there if you wanted to. That's what we'll do. A million. No one, if the average is 47, would get a million. Okay? So from 50 to a million, that will cover all the scores that are 50 and higher. Because no one's going to score a million or more. So pick a large, and I'm putting large all capitals. Pick a large value in this situation. L-U-E. All right? So in a situation where they want a number, a value or more, what percentage is this value more? Well, I don't know the top, so pick an extraordinarily large number so that you cover any number that might be the highest value, okay? And we're going to put a million. You can put 10,000, 100,000, whatever, as long as you cover that highest value. I mean, if the average was a million... You know, then maybe put a trillion, you know, because you've got to cover something a lot higher than the average, a lot higher. So if I go to second, distribution, normal CDF, which is two, I'm going to start at 50, and I'm going to go to a million. One, one, two, three, one, two, three, there it is. My mean and my standard deviation are the same. And if I paste that, hit enter. I have this value right here. Move this over. And that is roughly, keep this red the same, 0.1742. I slide that over twice, and I'm going to call that 17.4%. 17.4% of scores are greater than 50, 50 or more. Okay, they're greater than 50. Good. Now the last one, okay, this last one here, it goes back to find the percent 
of values that are less than 42. Okay, so this is going to be from zero scores that are between zero and 42 are values. So again, my less, uh, my lower bound and my upper bound. Now my upper bound is 42 and I'm starting at zero. And my mean and my standard deviation are exactly the same. 47 and 3.2. That makes it awesome to put in the calculator because I don't have to change a single thing when it comes to mean or standard deviation. Second, distribution. Two, from zero to 42. Let's get rid of that million. Okay, and in fact, let's get rid of the 42 here and then move down like it should have and then type 42. And everything else is the same. And I paste that and hit enter. Okay, 0 0.059. All right. So we'll keep that green. That is 0 0.0590. Slide that over twice. This will stay at 9 because the number after it is less than 5. 5.9%. 5 Great. That is perfect. And I think we're at 31 minutes. It's, that's awesome. We're going to stop here because when we pick this up, we're going to start to talk about the actual normal distribution bell curve. Okay. Some of you may have had questions like, well, what's this mean? Mean. Yeah, another dad joke. What's this average? You said it's 50th percentile, Visca. How does that work? Standard deviation. I understand that if I got it, I put it in the calculator. But, but what is it really? We're going to get into that detail on part two of this lesson. So uh, unit five, lesson six, part one is done. And hopefully unit five, lesson six, part two will be the end of this, okay? Uh, we'll finish this lesson up with part two of the video and I will see you then. For now, so long.